Hello, I am Anawiltos, and today I will be observing a game of Zero AD at the request of one of my commenters uh, from the suggestion video. So if you would like to suggest videos for me to make, then please do so in the comment section below or in the comment section of the suggestion video. Now, what we have here is a circular map with a number of different players who are all in it to win it, I suppose, and there will be successive waves coming in to attack. Now, I actually have a theory about the outcome of this, because I, I saw this replay earlier, just to make sure that my uh, program was replaying correctly, and I already know the outcome, but I think that at the end I will be making a separate video as to that theory as it uh, involves a possible uh, imbalance in the game's uh, design. However, uh, that will be in a separate video if I choose to make that. But I will mention it uh, at the end of this video as well. So right now, we are waiting for the first wave. Uh, let me just see how fast we are. We are at insane speed. And I think I will accelerate a bit faster. Uh, don't want to go too fast, though. I still want to be able to see everything that everybody does. And we can see here this strategy of building outposts. And... The thing about the out these outposts is that they don't cost any stone, as far as I know. Uh, which means that uh, this player here has plenty of stone left to get slingers. Meanwhile, however, uh, the longbowmen do require wood instead of uh, stone. So, wood has to be spent on producing them. Yes, and uh, similar situation here, using stone. Yes, see. And here we see a mixture of units, but these all require wood. So by choosing, because he ESD? he chose to do a lot of uh, hoplites. So by choosing to produce a unit that. Uh, requires stone instead of wood. Uh, it allows players to build things such as uh, sentry towers, but I think these actually require stone. Uh, yeah. Uh, but these outposts, I believe, require only wood, if I'm correct. Let me just check to be sure. Sentry tower and an outpost. Yeah, outposts only require wood. And sentry towers also only require wood, but it is the defense towers that require stone. So I think this is a strong strat, but of course it is sacrificing the potential of building wood-based units. Now, of course, I can see some trading going on here. Um, of course, the areas that the players can access are limited by uh, these sheer cliffs. And some trading between Hannibal Barca and Kudri. So I think it might be a good idea to move down to a normal speed as we approach, well, let's, let's put it on two times speed for now, as we approach that first wave. Yes, yeah, So here we're having um, Nellerid using a tactic of spearmen mixed with archers. Yes, Archers, but not many spearmen for... Well, there are yes, some spearmen, but not as many proportionately for um, Duilio. Okay, now, now I'm going to move down to normal speed. And yes, for Alexis, yes, a slinger focus. Yes, Steve. Mixed slingers and hoplites for Hannibal Barca. Yes, Steve. And slinger focus on Fenu. Yes, Steve. Archer with some spearmen for Kudri. Yes, and 
DSD? What looks like a Spearman focus. DSD? For. Uned. And we see the first wave incoming. Some troops coming in. And of course, they have to choose who to attack because if they let the infantry and the cavalry through, then they're just going to attack stuff. But a good tactic is also to attack the catapults and even take them over as a special means, as we will be seeing occur here. This uh, siege catapult will be taken over, and at that point, it goes to Frode, who is focusing on spearmen. And the ability to take siege devices is also very important. Uh, Duilio.92 is having some trouble with the siege devices. He doesn't have too many... Infin too many close-up infantry units. However, they are going in with uh, the spears and the bows. And I suppose they survived. There's still some fighting going on over here yeah, in uh, Thanu's camp. They have taken over this siege catapult though, so that's good for them. And they took over the bolt shooter as well. So we're seeing that seems to be the main strategy, take over the enemy's units. Um, yes, Siola seems to be on not the best level currently. And yes, same seems to be true for yeah, a lot see? of the others. They took some heavy casualties, uh, but Nellerid seems to be well off currently. Yes, yeah, And Duilio, Duilio seems to have recovered as well. Yeah, However, see? Duilio has not captured any siege units. That, any catapults or bolt shooters, that is. That may be a fatal weakness later in the game. Okay. Alexis has only captured a boat shooter. So now Duilio is being attacked and he is at a slight disadvantage. His his house is about to be destroyed, his Griham, and there it goes. It's gone. Now, an interesting thing about this game mode is that the siege catapults tend to focus on the houses before attacking the uh, civic center. But this of course means that if the house is destroyed, then the civic center may not be able to... Well, it will obviously become the main target at that point. Okay, let's take a look at the troops. Okay, not too many. Um, Siole has managed to capture another siege unit, which uh, means he's got a bolt shooter, two types of bolt shooters, that is, as well as two types of siege catapults. Kudri has only captured three units, and that may be a disadvantage later in the game. There is still combat going on here. This might become a significant disadvantage for Duilio. Okay, he has managed to capture units, but things do not seem to be going well. He is the only one left in combat. Everyone else has recovered a bit, rebuilt some houses perhaps, if they have been destroyed. Look at what we have here, a sentry tower built by none other than Fenu, and some defenses everywhere all around. Three sentry towers, that is going to be a strong defense, but hopefully that was not a waste when compared to yes, the yeah. ability to build units. But I guess, I suppose it all depends on 
a cost assessment. Because the towers can be repaired while the units uh, will be a bit more difficult to heal up. However, if we're looking at that, we do see that there is a health boost in Kunobilin. And the next wave has indeed attacked. Let's take a look at Duilio. He seems to be having trouble. His main... Um, his Acharya Chanakya does not seem to be holding well since it is not an offensive unit and he seems to be under heavy attack and has retreated into the fortress. Yes, he does definitely seem to be the only one that is currently losing the fight, although the battle is hard fought here with uh, Kudri. There it goes. He has resigned. He could not take the the pressure and decided that it uh, it was an unwinnable battle at that point. And I have to say I agree. I don't think he could have won at that point. And now. These spearmen will be endlessly chasing this poor woman through the valleys. How sad. So who will be the next one to go? Now an interesting thing is, because these areas are next to each other, it might be possible for a unit such as a siege catapult to shoot over the gap which means that if one player collapses, it might lead to harm to nearby players as well. And that is probably not a good idea. Now we do see that Siola has indeed put a bunch of slingers inside his civic center. And other players are using similar tactics, putting units inside their civic center, probably to boost their attack. And these guys are just going to be trapped here forever. Now these units are being distracted over here. So if an attack arrives, it may put their siege catapult at a significant disadvantage, which would not be beneficial for Hannibal Barca. But that seems to be the way things are going at the moment. There it goes, Siege Tower has six range attack, which has a piercing effect, 66 meter range plus 11, interval one arrow per two seconds. Okay, the next wave is in, they're unpacking their siege equipment, and there we go, off firing. Now let's take a look down here. These are some heavy attacks incoming, but the siege equipment is being target by, targeted by the defenders, which is, I think, a good idea to target the opposing siege, siege equipment. Thenu has not unpacked his siege catapult. That is probably a mistake. He probably should have kept it unpacked and ready in case of attack, but he does not seem to be focusing on that at the moment because he just got defeated, unfortunately. Okay, and it looks like my prediction is coming true. There goes a stone. And where will it hit? There you go. Kudri has been defeated. And it looks like 
the attackers are on the move. And this might not be a pleasant situation as they are shooting Barver. Let's take a look. Where are they hitting? Ah, they have hit the bolt shooter. That might become a problem. The next wave attack. Silva is being attacked both from this side as well as with his own enemies. And this wave, a lot of battering rams came in and are knocking everything down. This is not a pleasant time to be alive. Look at that. They have reached the civic center of Nilarid. He does have a few units in there, but some of them are women, and they might not be the most useful in this fight. Broda has been defeated. Nelerid has been defeated. Will Siolib be able to hang on? Alexis has been defeated. Now the only enemy, well, competitor left are Hannibal Barca and Siole. Hannibal Barca is still in combat, by the looks of it. Well, maybe he is not. I see a white dot on the map. Okay, it's gone. Hannibal Barca will have to make some serious recovery attempts if he is going to win. And it looks like one of his buildings is being attacked by an enemy siege catapult. Not a pleasant moment, to be exact. And who will be the winner of this event between these two opposing forces? Siole, or will it be Hannibal Barca? Well, the next attack has commenced. More battering rams. A bunch of pikemen. Holy cannoli. Pikemen. And they are pushing through with the battering rams. Now, Siola seems to have made the wise choice in rebuilding his houses, as the battering rams are focusing on those first. And his units are in the way of enemy battering rams, which is a significant advantage. Unfortunately, Hannibal Barca does not seem to have the same advantage. He has he is currently unpacking all his equipment. And Barrett goes in for the attack. However, he is also being attacked by a neighboring siege catapult, which he has chosen to attack at the moment. But he has lost his own siege catapult in response. He will have to rebuild. Siola does not have the same problem currently. His civic center is slightly damaged, but not as damaged as Hannibal Barca's. That could give Siole a significant advantage in the upcoming fight. Now Hannibal Barca is rebuilding the house. The houses. Siole has successfully rebuilt three houses. And will he be building anything else? Only time will tell. Okay. What will the next attack be? What units will the game throw at our two competitors? Who will be the winner in this amazing fight? I am excited to learn, even though I already know. Elephants. A tough opponent. But there is a shield of slingers around Siola's civic center, and the elephants are targeting the buildings first. So this may be a bit difficult. Elephants have reached Hannibal Barca Civic Center. Siole is being attacked. He has sent out a lot of slingers to attempt to block the elephants, but one elephant got through and is hitting his Civic Center directly. Hannibal Barca is now attempting to defuse the situation. He is focusing the elephant despite the fact that there are sacred band pikemen behind him. But now he can counter attack. 
Looks like Siole is finishing off their remaining opponents. And there it goes. Hannibal Barca has defended successfully and he is attempting to rebuild. Siole is also rebuilding, but his Civic Center is not as damaged. That is certainly an advantage. Now, the thing that I'm about to say right now is relating to what I think is an advantage that Siole has, and that is the shape of the Civic Center, unless I am mistaken. Uh, well, by the looks of it, they are they are the same shape. Never mind. I was going to say that because the Civic Center is round, it's easier to defend. But uh, by the looks at how the people rebuilding it are distributed, it does look like it does have a square shape after all. It's just that the outline of it and, uh, and the shape of it are round. But the base is round. So there is no exploit as I previously suspected. I was just looking at the base of the building and thinking that because it has less uh, a, a smaller circumference than uh, this has perimeter it would be more easily defendable. But apparently I'm not going to be making a video on that. Now Hannibal Barca is being heavily attacked. Three elephants are going in. One elephant is not focusing on the Civic Center, but it might not matter. Hannibal Barca has been defeated. How unfortunate for him. And looks like Siola is the winner, even though he's still defending. And it looks like he might even survive the wave. So I would say that he is definitely win the winner, not only having... Survive, not only having survived his competitors, but also having survived the wave, which will be the final wave in this game. Holy cannoli. How exciting. So I might do a few more of these um, replays to observe the strategy, observe the tactics, observe the plan, the game plan that people have. Total, seven buildings constructed. 20 buildings for Siole. So he certainly is ahead in that, compared to Hannibal Barca, who only built seven buildings throughout the entire game. Uh, he captured three buildings, which is interesting. Others also captured buildings. And... Okay. Units... Infantry, Siole was definitely working on the infantry, and Hannibal Barca was as well. So it seems that that is the way to go. Duilio built a couple of cavalry units, but that doesn't seem like it worked out for him. And he and they all captured some siege units, and obviously the ones that captured more did better in the end because that is some valuable units that otherwise you might not be able to get. Resources. Now resources ran out pretty fast. They were in the center and there wasn't much ability to get them. But in the end, Siole did gather a lot at the beginning, but not as much as Frode or Hannibal Barca. But he did receive a bunch of resources from other players who were going out towards the end. And that may have helped him a lot. Because overall, if you look at the end, he ended up using more resources than Hannibal Barca. Showing once again that money is probably a good indicator well, not money necessarily, but resources is a good indicator as to how well a player plays. It is all about the economy, about how many resources you can gather, how many you can receive, how many you can loot, and that brings you to a victory. Siole 
no, no market stuff. Nobody built a market. And I don't think anybody advanced or probably even could advance to a point where they could build a market on this map. Survival of the fittest was a game mode. Feminization, Nilarid and Kudri were the only ones that produced women in the game. The KD ratio was pretty low for everyone, but uh, Frode was definitely on top of that, uh, apparently. And map exploration, somehow Frode got a lot of map exploration done. Um, map control, maximum amount, Hannibal Barca, Kudri, and Siole. And that seems to be it. Uh, if you'd like me to do another video, please do uh, say so in the comments. And thank you for watching. And that will be it for today. I am Anamultos, over and out.